first thing that happened, weird pregnancy symptom that I had never heard of anybody getting. Hey guys, it's Al back for another bump date and oh my gosh guys, I cannot believe it. Today I am 37 weeks pregnant. Ah! Crazy! I cannot believe it. I literally like somebody pinched me. I cannot believe I made it to 37 weeks. Um, baby is fully developed and now they're just gonna put on some baby weight <laughs> and I'm so incredibly excited. I mean baby could come at any moment and it has just been crazy counting down and all this time it feels like it's been going by fast but also kind of going by slow it just kind of depends on the day but <clears throat> it's just absolutely amazing the bump is huge and uh and it's large and in charge and i'll tell you all about my weeks 35 and 36. <laughs> okay so we did have a little bit of drama in week 35 and 36 First thing that happened, weird pregnancy symptom that I had never heard of anybody getting. So you know how some people get swollen feet or whatever? Um, so I definitely had a little bit of that in the beginning of my pregnancy. My feet have definitely grown, but they don't look swollen. <laughs> and uh, I had some foot pain in the beginning of my pregnancy and that has since kind of gone away. But the weird thing is I didn't realize that people's like wrists and hands can swell so bad. So as you guys maybe saw in previous videos, I was wearing like a fake wedding ring or not, I, should, I shouldn't call it fake, like I am married, it's a wedding ring. Um, <clears throat> but it wasn't like my wedding ring that I wore on my wedding day because my fingers had swollen up. So I had bought like a cheapy wedding ring online that was like, I think it was like silver and then like plated gold so it wasn't super expensive. I think I spent like 20 bucks on it, it wasn't crazy. Um, so I had just bought it online because I really like wearing a wedding ring. It's just like important to me. It symbolizes a lot for me and I know that varies widely person to person. Um, but it just means a lot to me and especially like, you know, going out with my <laughs> husband and he's wearing his wedding ring and I'm not. It's like, I mean, I'm sure people assume I'm not wearing a ring because I'm really pregnant, but I mean like not wearing a ring and him wearing a ring, I'm like, could it look like I'm having an affair? Like, it's crazy. So anyways, so I was wearing a ring for a while and then one night I woke up, um, this was I think halfway through week 35 or whatever, and one night I woke up and like, my finger hurt really bad and I looked down and it was swollen and my ring was almost stuck on my finger and it was bizarre because like I bought a ring that's a full size up from what I usually wear. I think I usually wear around a seven and I got like an eight, eight and a quarter. I forget what it was, but I measured myself and I bought it online. And so I was really surprised by it because when I first got the ring, it was like a little bit big. And so I couldn't believe it had swollen my finger and it was stuck and it freaked me out. So I like ran into the bathroom and like ran my hand under cold water and it like shrunk a little bit and then I was able to use like soap and like pull it off but it freaked me out because I know there's some people out there that like get their rings stuck on their fingers and it's like not a big deal but it hurt it actually was like hurting my finger like the circulation was getting cut off it freaked me out so I was like oh my gosh so as you guys can see I am no longer wearing my, any rings for the rest of my pregnancy because it wigged me out so bad and it hurt for a while afterwards. In fact, this happened like a week and a half ago and you can still kind of see like how swollen up my fingers have gotten and like you can see the indent from where my running ring was. So crazy. <laughs> um, so then... So then I was like, okay, just a weird fluke, whatever. I actually, because I'm a nurse and I have my instruments around, I, I took my blood pressure before going to bed because I know technically at this at the end game here, like a really intense moment of swelling can be a sign of preeclampsia or some other scary things like high blood pressure, whatever. So I wanted to make sure everything was okay. And so I took my blood pressure and it was totally fine. I think it was like I don't know, 110 over like 70, like, you know, my usual blood pressure, totally normal. Um, so that kind of relieved me and I was able to go back to bed, but it was definitely like a dramatic moment. 
anyways, so, so that happened. And then I also have been noticing like some tingling in my wrists and my hands randomly going numb. <laughs> and usually happens if I'm laying down and it's usually at nighttime. I mean, because I'm laying down at night. <laughs> I, I should I should also say, because of, like, I've mentioned this in previous videos, because of how bad my heartburn is right now, I can't lay down during the day. Like, unless I know I'm taking a nap, and I have it, like, set in my brain, which I don't usually do. I'm not much of a nappy person. I'm more of a, like, eight hours in a row person. <laughs> um, but I, I just don't lay down, because my heartburn's so bad that if I lay down, I get sick. <laughs> and so... I take my Zantac right before bed and then I can lay down. So that's kind of like why I never lay down during the day and this only happens at night because I'm laying down at night. I'm assuming it's positional. But anyways, weirdest thing ever and I looked it up and I have pregnancy carpal tunnel which I find hilarious because I've never heard of that before and I thought I had heard of every weird pregnancy whatever. <laughs> and so I thought that was really funny. Um, so what it is, is like I have swelling in my arms and in my wrists and stuff like that. And um, and what that does is it kind of causes carpal tunnel and it kind of causes like that, like my fingers get tingly and numb randomly. Um, mostly, like I said, when I'm laying down at nighttime, really just annoying. It's not painful. The only time it was painful was when my finger swelled up because of my ring. Uh, it's definitely caused my hands to kind of swell. I don't know. I mean, I can tell, but I feel like normal people probably couldn't tell that my hands are swollen right now. I have no idea. I don't know. Can you guys tell my hands are swollen? <laughs> I have no idea. But weirdest thing ever and like weirdest experience ever. And I've gotten used to it. I feel like in everything in pregnancy, whenever something weird is happening, you just kind of like get used to it. <laughs> and so like, like me having constant tailbone pain, I've just like gotten used to and it's not a big deal um, but it's just weird and I've definitely noticed it's positional so like if I feel it if it's really bugging me at night and I like change positions or I like you know put my hand up or put it down or whatever usually if I put my hand like down um the circulation will return and I feel better but I just thought it was funny and I thought I'd share that with you guys because I'm wondering if anyone else has experienced pregnancy carpal tunnel before <laughs> bizarre Anyways, so that's been going on, but the more dramatic thing was that when I was 36 weeks and five days pregnant, so this was literally three days ago that this happened, and um, we were hanging out, and I was supposed to go see a movie with a friend, which I thought was funny, because she invited me to go see a movie that's out right now, and I was at first a little bit like... I don't know, sitting for long periods of time and having to pee all the time, like, is that going to be fun? Is like, a movie going to be worth it? Um, but luckily we live near a theater that has, like, reclining seats and everything for, like, a regular movie ticket price. Yay, Boston. So I was like, okay, well, as long as we go to one that has, like, the reclining seats, I'll probably be okay. And we pee, like, right before the movie and then right after. I'll probably make it through the movie just fine. So we're supposed to go and we get there and it's sold out, so we were bummed. So instead, um, we were trying to like figure out what we wanted to do that night. She had driven half an hour from her home to come and visit with me. And uh, I have like an awesome Marshalls near me and I have, an, I have a Target and an Ikea and all this uh, pretty close to us. And <clears throat> so we were trying to figure out what we wanted to do. And I was like, well, uh, let's do, I was like, well, if you want to, like, let's go to Marshall's because I haven't been in a while and they have so much cute stuff there. And also when I was putting away baby clothes, I realized that our poor winter baby has no pants, which I thought was hilarious. <laughs> like we've gotten a lot of baby clothes. I've bought baby clothes and for some reason, nobody buys you pants. Like it's just not a cute item. I don't, I don't know what it is. <laughs> no one buys pants. And I thought it was hilarious. I was like, you know what? I need like a couple baby clothes anyways. Let's go to Marshall's. Um, I would have gone to Target. Love Target. But it's just a much bigger store. And I knew there'd be a lot more walking. And I knew that I'd be uncomfortable. <clears throat> so anyways, we go to Marshall's. We spend like an hour and a half in the store. Because, I mean, when you have two girlfriends that are like shopping for baby clothes and whatever, it's like you can spend all day in Marshall's. <laughs> um, likes up. <clears throat> Thumbs up if you guys also love Marshalls. But anyways, I'm not partial. I also love like TJ Maxx and whatever, but we, that's the one that's near us. So, <clears throat> spend like an hour and a half in there, come home, 
she goes back to her place and by now it's like 9.30 at night or whatever. Me and my husband are just hanging out. I think I was working on like some sewing project or whatever. Like I, I've been, as I think I mentioned before, I've been repairing baby diapers. <laughs> and so, um, cause we, our cloth they bring and I got some repair cloth diapers, or cloth diapers that need repair for super, super cheap. So I, I was like working on that and everything was hunky dory. And so I started feeling some contractions or as we call them surges, you know, whatever you want to call them. And I've had Braxton Hicks kind of like the whole latter chunk of my pregnancy, so it's not that big a deal. As you guys know, I had that like kind of scare at like 26 weeks-ish um, with like, you know, am I going to early labor? Like what's happening? And so I started having contractions. And at first they were totally fine, and then they started getting more intense. And so I started like changing my position and kind of like breathing through them. And I was starting to feel kind of like they were coming regularly. So I told my husband, cause he was like doing stuff. He was like, I don't know, loading the dishwasher. And I was like, hey, can you like finish up what you're doing and come like help me out? Cause I think like, I think I'm having some contractions. And luckily he's not a freak out kind of guy. Like he's still, I think we're both in the mentality of like, we're never actually gonna have a baby. Um, so both of us are like, this probably isn't real, but like, let's at least get through these Braxton Hicks if that's what they are. And I was told them, I'm like, can you like start a bath for me? Cause one of the ways to like stop Braxton Hicks if they are Braxton Hicks is to like get in a nice warm bath and like calm down and they'll chill. Um, so he ran a bath for me and I was just kind of like hanging out doing different like positions that felt good like on the couch or whatever. And I got in the bath and the bath felt good but of course it was like a little cool so I like had to change the temperature on it. Um, and the contractions kept coming. So at this point I was like, well, maybe we should start timing them just in case. So we start timing the contractions and they're coming every five minutes and they're lasting over a minute. And they weren't, I mean, like, obviously I know a lot about birth and labor and we've been through all their classes and all this. And I know that that's not supposed to happen until like much later on in your labor. And these weren't, these were like, some of them were intense and I definitely, they were sensationful, but they definitely weren't like active labor intense from what I have seen and everything I know about active labor. Um, so I was kind of confused by what the heck was going on. We were like working through them, breathing through them and they were starting and they were like just intense and um, not active labor intense, but intense. So this goes on for two hours, and we finally call the on-call line, but by, by this point we're both like exhausted because it's really late. And we call the on-call line, and because I also was like, I don't know what to do because technically I'm not 37 weeks yet. Like, um, the birth center like, you know, doesn't want you to go into labor before 37 weeks, and if you do, you have to go to like the hospital, not the birth center. Um, so that was kind of disappointing. So I called them up and I got a really sweet midwife on the phone. One of my favorites, not our midwife, but just like one of the other ones who's so sweet. And she actually gave me some really good advice. She said, all right, you're doing everything you can. Like you're drinking, I was drinking tons of water. Like I literally have a one liter water bottle, this giant thing, and I drink two of them, two liters of water in two hours. So I was like peeing every 10 minutes. I was in a hot bath, like I was doing everything, trying to relax, doing everything you're like supposed to do to stop Braxton Hicks contractions or just early labor. And um, so, so she's like, you're doing everything you're supposed to do. Uh, why don't you do this? Try a thousand milligrams of Tylenol and 50 milligrams of Benadryl and give it an hour and call me back if you are still having contractions that are regular. So I was skeptical because I haven't really taken Tylenol this whole pregnancy. I've taken Benadryl definitely for when I had that terrible cold, but I have like definitely um, not taken a lot of Tylenol. So I was kind of skeptical, but I'm like, all right, I'll give it a try. So it's a magical combination, I take it. And sure enough, for some reason, my contractions start slowing down. So I don't know how this magical combination works, but it does. And so I thought it was kind of amazing. It slowed things down and then they started, I mean, I was still having contractions, but they were coming further and further and further apart. So me and my husband got out of the bath and I was like, I just want to be like laying in bed right now. I'm so tired. And so got out of the bath and relaxed on the bed and we like put a show on Netflix and we, I literally fell asleep to the show we were watching, which never happens. And, um, 
And we went to bed, everything was fine. I woke up the next day and we were like, well, that was weird. <laughs> but luckily it stopped and everything's been fine. And so I thought that was amazing. <laughs> and uh, I will tell you guys one other nugget of news, I guess, is I had my midwife appointment. And I know I should probably save this for my 37 week update, but whatever. I was 30, I was technically 36 weeks and six days when it happened. So I'll include it now. Um, I had my midwife appointment, told her what happened. She was like, yeah, okay. She's like, yeah, all that sounds appropriate, and like you could just be having false labor, and at least now you're almost 37 weeks, so it's all good if something happens. Um, and we over to, went over the signs of labor again and all that, and um, she's like, you know, we don't have to, but like, do you want me to check your cervix just to see? And I was like, yes, please, because I was like, because I'd love to know if baby's engaged or like what's going on. Um, so she checked my cervix. It wasn't uncomfortable at all. Like I know some people really get uncomfortable um, with cervic for cervical checks, but because baby's kind of low <laughs> and uh, I love our midwife. She is so incredibly gentle, like she's magic hands. So that's a weird thing to say, but anyways, so it wasn't uncomfortable and she did a check and I'm 50% effaced. My cervix is still closed, which is good. And, uh, and baby is, she said like a low minus three station. So like minus four is like floating up in your pelvis and you know like plus four is like baby out of your body so there's like this in between of like minus four all the way to zero and then zero to plus whatever so she said baby's like a low minus three so she definitely feels baby low and um baby has dropped a little bit i am 36 centimeters like my belly measurement is 36 centimeters and at my last appointment i was also 36 centimeters so, uh, like, I've probably dropped a little bit, because <laughs> um, I should be going up and up and up and up. So I think it's probably the baby's dropped a little bit. I think those contractions help baby kind of get, start getting engaged into my pelvis. So maybe that's why we had them. I'm not quite sure, but I'm just trusting my body and going with it. And I'm hoping that we don't have another false alarm. <laughs> but I'm sure we will, because I just feel like that's the story of my life. And yeah, it's never going to feel real. I guess until it's real. <laughs> but anyways, that's everything going on for right now. Sorry, this was a crazy long video, but it was kind of a crazy two weeks. So that's it for now, guys. Let me know how your journeys are going. And don't forget to do your baby hunch guess soon because we are going to have a baby soon. So you're running out of time. Uh, but that's it for now, guys. And if you like, subscribe. Bye. So check this out. Is that crazy or what? That is my... 37 week bump in my elephant shirt. <laughs> the super cozy elephant shirt. But isn't that crazy? I just feel like I'm getting bigger and bigger every day. <laughs> Yay!